Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today on Wednesday the 27th of February 2021 on Vision Store's first Exploring Technology with David Woodbridge webinar for 2021 on Back to School Assistive Technology webinar for students. My name is Tony Wu and I'll be one of your co-hosts today and I'm joined by my fellow colleague David Woodbridge who is our Retail AT Advisor and also shortly Sasha Lewis-Driver who is our Retail State Lead Services Manager. I would like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Please note that the webinar is being recorded for those who cannot stay for the entire session and you can access the recording later via our Vision Store YouTube channel. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have for David or myself or Sasha uh, throughout the session by using our chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat function uh, through keystroke alt H, or if you use a Mac, um, command H, and we'll endeavor to answer as many questions as, as we can and as many as time permits. Welcome, David. Howdy, howdy. And for people that are wondering, um, I'm sort of a virtual voice today because I thought it's much easier for people that can see or got low vision to see what I'm talking about uh, rather than looking at me. So that's why you'll probably just see my hands holding something, uh, but I actually won't be on the video. So with that, um, I guess we can get stuck into it. So first of all, I want to talk about a bit of a, some software, first of all. And when we said back to school, what I'm also talking about, what we're also talking about is back to school for primary, secondary, TAFE, university, community colleges, all that sort of stuff. Now, the one screen reader, uh, which is for blind and low, for blind and or low vision people, is called Jaws for Windows. And I know lots of people say that it's a very expensive screen reader, but hopefully now with the NDIS and other funding, um, it's the, the best screen reader for Windows because it's scriptable. You can do lots of changes to it. It works with some screen magnification software that I'll talk about in a minute. It also works with refreshable braille displays that we're also talking about today. So if you're a home user of JAWS for Windows or you want to be, then, and I'm going to round these numbers up, by the way, all down, around about $1,600 for the home license. And that allows you to use it at home, at school, and or other places as well. And... Like I said, it works with basically everything. It works with Google Docs, it works with Microsoft Office, of course it works with Windows um, and other third-party programs. And like I said, it's, it's very adaptable. You can also download a version of the JAWS demo. Of the, and I always say Freedom Scientific, but it's the Vispero Group now uh, website. But if you just still go to freedomscientific.com, um, you can download a demo. So. You know, I, I know we've got the free screen reader in NVDA, non-visual desktop. We've got Narrator, which is built into Windows. But particularly if you're doing mathematics and other advanced stuff at school, particularly STEM, science, technology, and engineering and mathematics, then that's, very, that's a good point. Thank you. I just heard that. So a screen reader is something that reads out the screen to someone who can't see the screen. So, for example, at the moment, I've got my headphones on. I'm actually totally blind myself. And I'm listening to my computer via my screen. And I'm using a Mac, so I'm using VoiceOver. But if this was my Surface Pro, I'd be using the screen reader, JAWS for Windows. So as I navigate the operating system with the keyboard, so I press the Windows key, I press the Tab key, I press my arrow keys, then the speech would read out to me what's on the computer screen. So fields and cells in spreadsheets. And if it was on the website, it would also tell me about hyperlinks, headings, edit fields, all that sort of stuff. So completely done by me using the computer keyboard, not the mouse, although you can use JAWS with the mouse if you're a low vision user. So that's, that's JAWS for Windows. Um, but like I said, you can still get your hands on the free version of NVDA and or Narrator, which is built into Microsoft Windows. If you are a person that wants both a full-blown screen reader and you want screen magnification, as in magnify the computer screen, including applications, 
you can get a combined version of what's called zoom text screen magnification and drawers for windows and that whole package is called fusion um, so because that's the combination between speech output and screen magnification output from the computer screen and that screen magnification is a lot more powerful and there's a lot more options in it than the default windows magnifier has in windows 10 uh, because you can do things like mouse tracking color changes inverse video um, you can customize the keyboard you can also get a, a what's called a zoom text keyboard which has got specific keys on the keyboard uh, which allows you to actually control the screen magnifier part if you like of fusion um, which is actually quite advantageous so if you bought JAWS Windows and if you bought Zoom Text as one package called Fusion, then you're looking around about, and I hope I get this right because I've just lost more space in my notes, about $2,300. Um, if you buy Zoom Text separately by itself, so let's say you, you don't need JAWS for Windows um, and you don't need a combination of Zoom Text with JAWS, you just need a large print program that magnifies the screen, and that's the only thing it does, plus all the other invert video and so on, then Zoom Text by itself, the screen magnification is about $850. Um, and again, the same with JAWS, you can also get a demo copy of Zoom Text from the same website, Freedom Scientific, or the Vespero group. Um, you can also get, and this is, this is going to be a little bit hard to explain. So, Tony, please feel jump, free to jump if I don't get this right. But sure. um, with, with Zoom Text, you can get a version of Zoom Text called Zoom Text Magnifier slash Reader. Now, what the Reader part does, it's not the power of a full-blown screen reader like JAWS. It's just designed to read parts of the screen like an application window or a document for a low vision person that might get visually fatigued. Okay, so it's not like a blind person using a full blown screen reader to read everything on the screen that JAWS does. The Zoom Text Magnifier Stroke Reader is a magnification program first and a little bit of speech output secondly. Um, um, well explained, David. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Because <laughs> right. I always people say to me, "What's the, what kind of blind person uses Zoom Text magnifier stroke reader?" And it's like, well, it's not designed for a, a blind person. It's designed for a vision person. And Tony, just throw a message. I'm assuming we're going to have links to pass on to people after this webinar. That's correct. And welcome, yeah. Sasha. Hello. How is everyone today? We're good. All right, um, I did mention the Zoom Text keyboard. Now, I said that was a, uh, a keyboard that allows you to control Zoom Text. That's about $265 for the keyboard, but it says leaning over. If you just wanted a large print keyboard like the one that I've got here, um, then this one is about $15. So this one's a basic USB keyboard. So you can get, and I always get confused, this confused as a blind person. Um, you can get a yellow on black. I think I got that right. I remember that went one way around. White on black or black on white keys. And you can plug this into a Windows computer, a Mac, or anything that takes a USB keyboard. Now, the only thing I'll warn you about, when you plug this into a Mac, um, I've heard some people say that the keys don't map properly for control and option on a Mac properly. And also too, sometimes these keyboards, depending on what version of the Mac you're running, stops the Mac from going to sleep. You can still shut it down and restart and everything else, but it may stop the Mac going to sleep. I don't know what it is, um, but for a $15 keyboard, it's actually very good. So this is actually quite a good keyboard. So like I said, it's $15 for a basic USB keyboard. And I always say to people, don't rely on a Bluetooth keyboard if you've got a Mac or a Windows machine because sometimes the Bluetooth keyboard goes flat and you're left high and dry. It's always nice to have a backup USB keyboard. And this is why I've got one here at home because it's just rather than being safe um, or being safe and sorry. 
So that's the large print keyboard. And it is just called a large print keyboard. If you search on uh, shop.visionaustralia.org and just stick in the word large keyboard or even keyboard, um, then it'll come up in the search on the, the shop site for Vision Australia Vision Store. Um, Tony, when I'm talking about large print, did you want to talk about some of the low vision stuff that we've also got at the moment? Oh, I was going to ask um, you actually, um, hmm. what are some of um, alternatives to Zoom text um, and, and JAWS? Like, um, is there a product called Dolphin uh, software that, that one could potentially use as well? There is, yep. So Dolphin, the, the main product is called Dolphin Supernova, which sounds actually very cool. Um, and it's a large print and screen magnifier program. You can also get a version of Dolphin Supernova that just can have the, the screen reader component or the large print component. Now, one thing I didn't mention with, this goes for Supernova and Draws as well. They also report, to report, support refreshable Braille, which I'll get onto in a minute. And that's a way of being able to read Braille off the computer screen via an de electronic device that I'll talk about in a minute. But Supernova is good. The reason why we're mentioning these alternatives, so, you know, JAWS, Fusion, or Zoom Text, or Dolphin Speech, Dolphin Magnification, or Dolphin Supernova, which is the combined screen reader and screen magnification, also supporting Braille, is that sometimes depending on your education setting, your employment setting, or something else, Maybe JAWS or NVDA or Narrator may not work or Zoom text may not work. And you think, oh, well, like, hey, Lou, before I start pulling my hair out, I'll go and try Dolphin Supernova, for example. And that may be a lot better to actually use rather than sitting there and trying to troubleshoot something that may or may not work. So that's why it's always good to have an alternative. So uh, full version of JAWS and Zoom text will be Fusion and the full version of Dolphin speech and screen magnification would be Supernova. And again, you can get a, a demo version of Dolphin as well, and we'll have the link in the, the notes. I was going to say show notes and me being a podcaster, but we'll have it, the link later on. Great. Um, you mentioned you wanted me to touch on a few low vision aids mm -hmm. uh, that I would recommend for a student. Um, there are a couple. Um, unfortunately, my camera doesn't allow me to demonstrate um, the actual device itself, but there is two that I wanted to mention. One is called the Zoomax Snow 12 inch with text to speech. Um, this has a nice 12 inch screen, so it allows um, the student to, um, I guess, magnify what they want to see um, underneath um, the camera. Um, on the nice 12 inch screen. Um, there are buttons at the bottom of the unit that allow you to increase or decrease the magnification, change the contrast if you need to, um, as certain contrasts do allow um, the user to see the text on a document a bit more easily. Um, but it also is a touch screen as well. And what's nice about this Zoomax Snow 12 inch um, digital magnifier is that it comes with a stand that you can um, sit the magnifi magnifier on and it allows the student to put, for example, like a workbook underneath. So that means they can do um, writing tasks or complete a worksheet underneath. Um, but if the student does um, experience any visual fatigue or eye strain when they're trying to read, um, it has the text-to-speech capability. So by pushing a button on the actual device itself, it can scan um, the document that you're trying to read, provided that it's printed text. Um, it will convert the text to audio. So that means um, you can have the text read aloud to you. So good for those students that, um, I guess, want to read themselves, but if they experience any eye strain or visual fatigue, they can have the device read aloud to them as well. Um, you can also take uh, photos of your actual uh, document that you're trying to read um, as well and save it into its memory and sort of bring it up later. The other device that I wanted to touch on is the Prodigy Connect 12 with a distance camera. Um, this device is manufactured by Humanware, um, but Vision Store um, obviously sell it as well. And it's a 12-inch um, Android tablet, which has 
um, proprietary software um, pre-installed into it. So you can use it as a, a digital magnifier. And it comes in this neat um, stand that you can um, sit the actual tablet in. So um, if you do any, I guess, writing tasks, you need to read any documents. The, um, the document is underneath the, the actual tablet itself. And you just have to move the document up, down, left and right to scan the document as you read. Um, being an Android tablet, you can uh, do your pinch and zoom gestures to enlarge um, the, the text to a size that you can see. You can change the contrast if need be. Um, like the uh, Zoom Max Snow 12, the Prodigy Connect 12 as well, um, allows the text to speech component. So if you push a button, provided that it's printed text, um, it can scan the text, sorry, it can um, scan yet yeah, the document um, and read aloud the actual um, text to you as well. So again, if you, the student experiences any visual fatigue or any eye strain, it is a, a good alternative um, good way to continue reading that document. It also comes with a, a distance camera as well. And what's good with that distance camera is that if the student is in a lecture theater, uh, if they're a uni student, or if they're um, in a classroom and wanting to look at what's on the whiteboard or smart board, you can focus um, the, the image uh, in the distance onto that distance camera and it shows up on the 12-inch the tablet. So um, a good combination of near magnification and distance magnification. Um, I guess with anything in the distance, provided that it's printed text as well, you can actually capture that, um, that image and have it read aloud to you as well. And the actual stand itself folds down quite nicely. Um, so you can take it um, anywhere and it's very um, portable. Um, so those would be two um, low vision digital magnifiers that would be um, quite suitable for, for a student. Um, the Prodigy Connect 12 with distance camera is about 4,300-ish. Um, and the Zoomax No 12 sash, it's about 2,000 something? 1,500. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so th those would be the, um, the low vision devices that, um, that I would sort of recommend for a student. Mm. Um, obviously, there are optical magnifiers that could be applicable as well, uh, particularly in a primary school setting, like a, a big magnified dome it is quite um, useful for, for a low vision student, in, particularly in primary school, to sort of sit the, the dome on the actual reading material itself. It will enlarge um, the text within the dome and all the student has to do is just move it across the page, up, down, left and right to scan what they're reading. Um, so th there are um, optical aids that could be applicable as well, not only digital. Excellent. Mm. Very good. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about my favourite stand. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the Belkin tablet stage stand. So it's a fold-up one. So I've had it sort of like collapse like that. And then if I just push it back, so it clicks in, and then I pull this up, what's really cool here, I, if I can uh, hopefully my camera will pick this up. Maybe I'll just turn it that way. Um, there's a little lip here, that like a little ledge or a little shelf that I can pull out. So if I want to use my iPad mini or my iPad 10.5 Pro on this little Belkin tablet stage stand, I can do it like that. Uh, so I can have it at an angle, particularly if I'm viewing stuff while I was low vision. Uh, what's really cool about this one is I can put, pull it up like that, close the little shelf, and then I can position anything on this platform so that if I was using... And Tony was talking about video magnifiers, electronic magnification. Well, there's also software that you can run on either a Windows machine, a Mac, or more, more particularly an iPad, an iPhone, a Samsung phone, et cetera, that you put the camera or the smartphone or the tablet on top of this stand. As long as the camera's got a clear view to what's underneath it on the actual rest of the tablet stand, then you can do what's called optical character recognition. And optical character recognition is simply what it sounds like. It's 
recognises optically via the camera what the print is on the page and then translates it into text and then reads that text electronically out. Or if it's on the screen and you've got screen magnification, particularly on uh, the iPhone or the iPad, then the person can also read it in large print. And again, the screen reader on an iPhone and iPad is called VoiceOver and they can read it with VoiceOver. So that's actually very, very powerful. Um, the nice thing about the, the software that you can get for OCRing on the iPhone in particular, and this also applies to the iPad, it's called Seeing AI. So that's Seeing as in the word S-E-E-I-N-G, Seeing AI is from Microsoft and it has very good OCR capability in it and that's absolutely free. So again, that's the Seeing AI app from Microsoft. And it's the one that I tend to use quite a lot of the time. Um, you can get similar software for Android. Hopefully Microsoft will bring one out uh, soon for Android for seeing AI. Um, but this is my favorite stand. There's also a stand that we're hopefully getting in a few months or so. And it's the one that I'm actually using to do the Zoom meeting today. Um, but I'll leave it as a surprise once we get it in store because it's uh, one of my favorite stands. Um, but I'll, I'll let you know when we get it in because there's no point in telling you about it yet because we don't have it. That's just a little Easter egg uh, to look forward to in the next month or so, I hope. All right, so that's the Belkin stage stand. Um, let me just pop that on the, he's gonna say on the floor, on the chair. Um, now, I've been talking about Braille, and people might have noticed through the camera a little bit. This is um, a refreshable Braille display. So, and I'm Tony, I'm not sure if the folks viewing can see the Braille on this Braille display, but this one's 40 cells or four characters across. So at the moment, it says displaying Tony Wu's video button, um, because that's the button in Zoom that I'm currently reading with voice service supporting the braille display so i can sit here and read the braille i can move it electronically so i can i can read headphones switch camera you are using enhanced encryption possibly ticked because <laughs> that's an image and so on now the really cool thing about this braille display is and there's quite a lot on the market but most of the braille displays have a braille input keyboard so if you're a braille person used to braille or if anybody's seen the original Perkins electronic braille with six keys and a space bar to produce braille, well, this one's quite definitely a QWERTY keyboard because quite a lot of people like me in particular, I'm, I've am i lost my sight when I was eight, which was like about 45 years ago, but I'm more of a QWERTY keyboard typer than a braille input brailler or a, or a braille type writing person. So I much prefer to read in braille, but I prefer to type in in print just using the normal keyboard. So this device not only supports my iPhone and my iPad, it also supports my Windows computer running JAWS, my Mac supporting VoiceOver. Um, it currently does not support Android or Samsung phones or tablets. Um, that's just gonna be a firmware update. So hopefully that'll be soon. Um, and it's just a really, really nice keyboard to use to type on. And the nice thing about it, if I press this home button on the front of it, I can go back to the sort of the main menu and I've got uh, an editor. So I've got like an offline editor. So somebody rings me up and says, oh, can you please take down this reference number? I can quickly jot a note on the Mantis Q40 itself. Um, and the reason why it's called a Mantis, who knows? Um, <laughs> uh, Q40 just stands for QWERTY 40 cells. Um, so I've got terminal, so we've got the editor, we've got terminal mode, which is just a, a fancy way of saying connect to the device that you want to connect to. I've got a library for files, a file manager for copying files, because it can read uh, Microsoft Word documents, RTF and Braille files as well. Date and time settings, online services, which is like online libraries from overseas and the user guide. But the nice thing about it, if I just go back up to terminal, Hit enter, hit enter again. I've got David's Mac, David's work iPhone, hit enter, and I'm back on my iPhone again. Really nice and straightforward. Um, and of course, and you may not know this, people that are, are, are new to looking at bar displays or keyboards, I can completely navigate the whole iPhone or the iPad 
from this keyboard because VoiceOver says you're using a Bluetooth keyboard, not just a braille display, and you can use all the Bluetooth keyboard commands that I would normally use on, say, a Magic Bluetooth keyboard, which is like an Apple keyboard on the iPhone or the iPad. So I get the benefit for me as a blind person using full keyboard access, braille display, and also if I wanted to, and I took my headphones out, you'd hear voiceover speaking back to me when I'm currently navigating through the Zoom on the iPhone app at the moment. So pretty spectacular stuff. Price-wise, um, this one is about $4,000, I want to say. Um, and I just want to compare you quickly because um, I tend to get carried away talking to this stuff. I just want to show you a straight braille display. So this is a straight braille display. This is the Focus 40. Um, and as you can see, um, we've got braille keys here. So when I was talking about the Perkins Braille before versus the Mantis Q40 having a QWERTY keyboard, this one's got the braille key. So I've got dots one, two, three, four, five, six, and the space bar here. I've got the braille on the keyboard. So if I press the menu button and I scroll up and down, I'm going through the actual menu of the actual Focus 40. Um, so I guess the main difference between this one is that it's quite wider than the, the Mantis. It doesn't have a QWERTY keyboard. It does have a scratch pad um, that's used as a bit of a note taker. It does have a way of quickly being able to switch between Android, iOS or iPhone or iPad, Macintosh and Windows very quickly. On the Mantis, I go through a menu rather than sort of keyboard shortcuts, if you like. Um, so this would be for people that like a Braille input keyboard, not just the QWERTY one, and the Braille display. And the reason why we always recommend Braille displays, particularly if you're a blind person you know Braille, is because when I'm listening to speech, I'm not hearing the punctuation, the capitalization. If I've got double spaces on the line between characters or whatever else it might be. So this is absolutely brilliant way of proofreading because it's much more efficient to proofread in Braille than it is with speech. Otherwise, with speech like JAWS or VoiceOver, I'd have to turn punctuation on for everything. So I'd get, hi, comma, my name is capital D, David, exclamation mark, new line, new line, capital I, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the Focus 40. Um, Again, it's designed to work with JAWS, but it'll also work with other screen readers, including Supernova, uh, NVDA, the free screen reader, non-visual desktop access. Um, so they're the two main ones that we have at Vision Australia. Uh, so the Mantis Q40, the QWERTY keyboard, and the Focus 40 Braille input keyboard and Braille display. Now, just to change the tone a little bit, I'm just gonna, oh, Jesus, this is heavy, right, oh. Right, um, this is probably one of my, I keep saying this is my favorite device. Every electronic device is my favorite device, by the way. Um, this is an electronic Perkins Braille. It's called the Mount Batten. It's been around since 1990. So it's been around for 30 years. And the reason why this thing is so fantastic is that if I turn it on, So he just said, good day, not charging advanced mode. Now, if I start brailing on the, the Perkins style keyboard. So I get speech output. I also get in braille, this is a test. And the really cool thing about this device, not only can I braille on it, if I don't know Braille, but I'm a support teacher or I'm a family member who wants to produce a Braille list for their child who is blind, I can plug in a standy, standard, standy, standard computer keyboard. And as I type on that computer keyboard, it will come out on Braille on this thing. So I don't need to learn Braille. If I want to do a, a, a spelling list, I can just plug in a keyboard, start typing. As soon as I start typing, it comes out on Braille don't have to know anything about Braille to produce spelling lists or anything else or mathematical equations or anything else for that matter. Really, really cool. So that's the second, second thing it does. The third thing it does is if I plug in a 
this device to my iPhone or my Android slash Samsung tablet, I can transfer whatever's on my iPhone or Samsung phone to this and actually use it as a Braille printer or what we call a Braille embosser. So if I've got some coding examples that I want to give to some children that I've been doing some coding workshops with, I can say, here's an example of the coding instructions. I can bring up the MBCOM application, copy the text to that and say, or press the word, a button in boss in hey presto, I've got a brow copy on here, ready to hand out to the student. That's really, really fantastic. And I can also plug this in via or connect it via a USB cable to a Windows computer or a Mac and also use it as a refreshable brow dis uh, display, a brow printer. And finally, uh, if it's not enough, I can also plug in a thing called a Mimic. And that's a little LCD screen that plugs in via a cable. And whatever is brailled on the brailler, on the mount button, will also come up in a 80 character by four line LCD screen that you can pan backwards and forwards with. So if you're a teacher, or a parent and you just want to make sure that uh, Freddie is uh, brailing stuff he's supposed to braille, or she, um, then you can quickly scroll back through the LCD screen. So it's an extremely versatile um, device. It is worth $7,000, so it is quite expensive, but you really get multiple devices in one and it's highly used, particularly in primary and secondary schools. Um, and the, the place that's, when we saw the Vision Australia, but our, um, our, I want to, what's the word to say quantum? Well, let's just say quantum technology, uh, who Vision Australia also owns as well, uh, sells the Mountbatten Brella as they do the Focus 40, but it's a really excellent device. And uh, you can also get, if you want to get a loan or a demonstration of this, Quantum would be more than happy to loan you either a Mountbatten Brella or a Focus 40 refresh or brow display to have a look at um, and also humanware that does the Mantis Q40 as well uh, I know they're a bit short of stock at the moment but you can also get a demonstration or hands-on from them as well so that's the Mountbatten Braille one of my really really favorite devices particularly for sighted folks that don't know Braille as I said plug in a computer keyboard start typing and you're producing Braille really really spectacular all right I've just noticed the time so I'm going to start talking a bit for <laughs> Not faster, but hopefully not so long each product. I just want to do these two at once. Now, these two are very similar. So the one I've got here, this tiny one I've got in my hand, is called the Victorita Stream. Now, this was the vision designed for people who are blind, but if you are dyslexic, print dis have a print disability, or any other reason why you can't access print and you want it read out to you through an electronic voice, then this device will do that as well. So if I just turn it on, what this actually does is allows me to read text documents, RTF documents, and .doc files, as well as HTML files as well for web files. It also allows me to listen to talking books from the Vision Australia library. Um, Including our, um, including our newspapers. So we've got about 200 newspapers from right around Australia. And we've also got about 70 newspapers as well. Um, you can also record. So on the, on the side here, I've got a record button so I can take down notes. Um, and I'm just going to try and shut it up. Um, so we've got, so I can do podcasts on this. I can subscribe to podcasts. I can listen to internet radios via I've got references, I've got references and Vision Australia is actually the Vision Australia library. And then if I press my other button here, I've got notes. And then if I had text documents on here, I could also switch the text documents. So this device is about $500, um, a really good device for, I said, accessing do do documents with speech output. Um, and other formats, including podcasts and the radio. Now, that's that one. Start recording. Whoops, he says pressing the wrong button. We'll just stop that. All right, so this other one is the same thing, but it's a bit thicker. And the reason why it's a bit thicker is because it's also got a built-in GPS system in it as well. Now, 
Um, most people who are blind or low vision, when they use GPS systems, they normally use their smartphone to do GPS or navigation around the place. This is a standalone one. So it doesn't rely on a cellular connection or a connection. It just gets the feed directly off the satellite. It's got built-in maps and it's designed to give you as all software does on the iPhone or the Android phone, step-by-step -step instructions about where you're moving around. So this one's called the Victor Reader Trek. So it includes whatever the Victor Reader stream does for all its document reading, internet radio, podcasts, Vision Australia library. Plus it does the online GPS satellite navigation stuff as well. So that means the price is basically $1,100. It does speed up the price a lot. But if you're particularly in a rural area or in a metropolitan area and you want to use your iPhone for, or Android device for other things like schoolwork, um, OCRing, that sort of stuff, then it's almost good to have a separate device for your GPS navigation because I know when I go to Sydney, if I use my GPS on my iPhone, I know by the time I get from Gosford to Parramatta in Sydney, I've lost about 40% of my battery on my iPhone. Whereas where if I use this, I'm purely using the Victor Reader a Trek as my GPS. And look, if it goes flat, doesn't matter. I can always plug it in when I, when I get to work. Uh, that's a good question about the radio. Uh, sometimes um, people like to listen to internet radio from around the world. Now, if you listen to normal standard radio, it's normally only AM or FM, or if you're in a metropolitan area, it's digital. But you can't normally listen to internet, uh, sorry, radio stations from around the world without having some access to the internet. So if you want to use your laptop, whether it's PC or Mac, and listen to the, or your iPhone or your, um, your Samsung device, fine. But let's say you don't want to use a smartphone or a tablet or a computer. You just want one device that does what you need, like listen to your daisy books or listen to the radio via the internet, then this will do it for you. So again, it's different choices for different people. It's just a different solution for some people that may want particular things in general. All right, so that's that one. Sorry, David, it's Sasha. Um, mm. We got a question, um, just wanting to know if uh, you recommend if you have dictaphones that do text-to-speech recommendations. I know mm -hmm. there's the Dragon app, uh, I think it's called Dragon uh, Anywhere, um, that you can, uh, there is a dictaphone and you can put that on your, your phone. Do you yeah. have any other suggestions? No, look, I, I, I normally suggest just use what's, what's built into it. I use, um, I use the voice dictation in my iPhone or my iPad and it doesn't work too badly at all. Um, on the Mac, I use voice dictation, of course, Siri to launch applications. And on my Surface Pro, um, I use the built-in Windows dictation. The magic thing to Windows di to any dictation though is your microphone. Yeah. Because if you don't have a good microphone, it's garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you'll get gobbledygook, which is a certain language, I believe. Um, so uh, that's the key to it. So a really good key, a mic that's really close to your mouth. Um, but yeah, look, I, I would suggest using what's ever built into your into your iPhone, your Samsung, because voice dictation in these days is quite good. And remember, with iOS in particular, so that's iOS on your iPhone, iPad, you can get what's called voice control now. So you can completely navigate your iPhone or your iPad via your voice. And if you turn on what's called a grid system, what it does, it puts numbers next to every single control or item on the screen. So let's say, for example, you might be using, um, say, the Audible app and you wanted to press the play button. Well, the, on the grid, the play button, you can see visually might be numbered 41. And all you have to do with the voice controller is say, press 41, and it presses the button for you. So that's extremely powerful. Um, the accessibility options available on the iPhone, iPad and Android as well are very powerful. But like I said, um, <coughs> excuse me, voice dictation is what's built in these days. It's much easier. Perfect. Thanks, Dave. <coughs> excuse me. Um, okay. So let me just, I want to grab a little device here. Now, 
This is what's called an ultra, sorry, a, a sonic ultrasound device. So you would normally wear it like this on your wrist. So if I've got my hand beside me on my waist, this little sonar device points forward. And then whatever comes closest to me, this whole unit starts to vibrate. And the faster the vibration, the closer I'm getting to the object. So what this is really good for is that if I'm walking around in a playground or I'm walking around at university and I might not be sure that I'm getting close to an object or there's a pole or a bollard in the way, this will also pick it up before my white cane or my guide dog hopefully avoids it. Um, or if I'm walking down a corridor and I want to find, say, the third hallway that goes off the hallway to the left, then of course, every time this it goes, it hits the wall and it goes vibrate, vibrate, vibrate. When it hits an open space, i.e. a corridor going off to the left, it's gonna stop vibrating, then it'll start vibrating again when it hits the wall and keep going. And then I just count the, the blank spaces next time it hits the second or third hallway or open door. So it, it really is good for protecting you from basically waist height up, up a little bit. Um, I use it in particular as a blind person when I get off the train at Stratfield on the educator Parramatta. I get off the train and I literally point this at the wall that's beside the ramp so that when it stops vibrating and it's the end of the wall because it's no more, there's no more vibration, I can say to my guide dog, find the ramp because I know that when I give her that command, I've just passed the ramp. She can see the entry to the ramp. So she immediately pivots 180 degrees and goes down the ramp. Um, what I'd have to do if I wasn't using my sooner band, I'd say things like find the ramp to, to find the ramp. Um, and no, it's not necessary to have O&M training. Um, we do recommend it if you're not used to such a device. And we always say, don't use this by itself. Um, I use it in combination with my cane, my cane or my guide dog. So it's a secondary orientation mobility device. It's not a primary orientation device. But it's like I said, it's very good. And because it's wearable, like that on my wrist, um, you know, things like the mini guide, and I, and I know you can get a little attachment to the mini guide for your, for your cane, but this is on your wrist all the time. So it's a really great way of avoiding obstacles um, when you're walking around. So that's actually really, really, so that's actually really, really handy. Um, that's, most of the stuff I've got to talk about today. Um, I also wanted to remind people um, that um, if you want any information on this stuff, we're actually going to have it on uh, all the stuff in, in links. Um, the other thing to also remind you about that we're also an Apple reseller. So if you're after an iPhone or if you're on, um, so if you're after an iPhone, an iPod Touch, an iPad, a Mac, an Apple Watch, an Apple TV, um, then we resell all of those devices. Um, so again, if you go to shop.visionaustralia.org and you look for um, Apple, then there's a whole section just on, on, on Apple. Um, somebody did ask about the Orbit Reader. Now the Orbit Reader, I've got Orbit Reader 20, which is a 20 cell braille display. Um, look, it's a really good, backup as a braille display. I don't know if I'd use it in a classroom because if I bring up the menu and have it go now, have a listen to this. It's actually quite noisy. Um, and if you've got particularly people that have got sound sensitivity or may have autism, that click click like a, like a rain stick almost drives them absolutely batty. Um, so the I guess that if I had to compare the braille firmness on the Orbit Reader 20, so because it's a 20 cell braille display, to what's on my uh, Mantis, I would say that the braille on the Mantis is a probably three quarters the firmness of this one. So this one's referred to as signage braille. It's quite hard and a little bit harsh if you've got sensitive fingers. Um, the braille display that's in the Mantis Q40 and on the uh, Focus 40 is quite soft brow, but extremely readable as well. So it's actually quite good. But like I said, particularly if you're in a workplace, um, 
you know, this thing's only $600 and it's just a bra display with a basic note taker. But for $600, it's a good backup one to take notes quickly. This will also link up um, to my iPhone, my Mac, my iPad, my Samsung phone and everything else. Um, but if I'm in a recording studio doing a podcast on my radio program, I'd have my producer jumping through the microphone um, to ring my neck <laughs> if I tried to use this in a recording studio because, like I said, it's just far too noisy. Um, Recording-wise on, um, on the iPhone, the Voice Memo app is actually really, really good. And particularly if you've got an iPhone 11 or 12, um, you can record for us how long the storage lasts in your, your iPhone. You can, with voice dictation in particular though, there's an old trick with voice dictation. Always dictate either a sentence or a paragraph at a time. Do not, exclamation mark, sit there and dictate to the cows come home because what will happen is it'll dump it after I think it's about, I want to say about two or three minutes. Um, and I don't know if it does it on the Android one, but I know on the, on the iPhone there is a limit. It will stop and then it will just dump what you actually told it to, sorry, what your voice dictated. So um, I always say to people, just to make sure that everything's nice and hunky-dory and you're getting what you're speaking, then just do one sentence or a, a paragraph at a time. Um, so on the iPhone, if you want to record, it's just the voice memo app. If you want to just do voice dictation, then you just dictate into, it brings up the little microphone button to the left of the spacebar. You dictate into notes or pages or the same thing on a, an Android or a Samsung phone and the same on Mac or Windows. You just enable the dictation software on either Windows or Mac um, and off you go. And both Microsoft.com slash accessibility or Apple.com slash accessibility has all the tips in for doing voice dictation, voice output, screen magnification, anything you like. And also remember that other app that I also mentioned too called Sing AI. That's the one that I said was really good for optical recognition. And remember that the magnifier in the iPhone in particular, or the iPad can be also used as a video magnifier. So you can actually point your camera at the whiteboard and you can zoom in, zoom out. You can change the colors on the screen, you can basically do lots of things you can do with the standard video magnifier, probably not as many things, but in a pinch, if you've got your iPad on you and you've got your iPhone on you, you have a video magnifier built into the, uh, into the iPhone or the iPad. And I just want to give people a warning too. Um, on Twitter today, as we do the webinar, if you know of anybody that uses a refreshable brow display like the Focus 40, the Mantis, an Orbit Reader, um, a brilliant or any other brow display. Um, iOS 14.4, which came out this morning, has a bug which stops a brow display reconnecting. So it reconnects, but it doesn't produce the brow display, uh, the refreshable brow on the brow display. And um, American Printing House for the Blind, who produced the Mantis Q40, said that it does affect their device and it may affect other brow displays. So the thing at the moment they say is do not um, update to iOS 14.4 if you're using a refresher brow display, just to be sure. So turn off automatic updates in settings, general software updates, and there's a button that says automatic update, just go in there and turn it off. Current version of JAWS is 2021. Um, and by the way, there's a new function in uh, JAWS now, which is the voice assistant. So like you've got uh, the Nest Audio or, or the Nest Mini that we also sell for doing smart speakers. Well, there's a thing in um, JAWS 2001 now. If you're using JAWS, it's called Sharky. So you say, say, so you can say things like, hey, Sharky, increase the speech rate. Hey, Sharky, decrease the speech rate. Hey, Sharky, turn the volume up and so on. If you're using Zoom text, it's called Zoomy. <laughs> Uh, which makes me feel like I'm back in preschool. Um, but you can say to Zoomy, hey, Zoomy, increase magnification level. Zoomy, decrease magnification level. So it's also, it's also very cool as well. So 18.0 18, 18 for JAWS, by the way, is getting a little bit long in the tooth. What we tend to say with screen reader software, this goes for JAWS and Zoom text, 
because Microsoft keeps updating Windows 10 and because it keeps updating Microsoft Office and other applications, if you get too far back, two things happen. One, things don't start working properly in JAWS or Zoom text. And number two, the longer you wait between software versions to update, the more it's going to cost you in a software maintenance agreement to upgrade from one version to the other. So um, if you're with the NDIS so you can afford it, I always try and keep my screen reader up to date as much as possible or buy a software maintenance agreement. You can also talk to the people at the Vision Australia shop about and always keep your screen reader up to date. Uh, do we know roughly, Sasha, how much software updates? I think it just varies on the software version, doesn't it, that you're currently using? I've got a funny feeling it's a couple of hundred dollars uh -huh. though, I think. Yeah. Um... I'm just looking it up now quickly. You've so got nine it, minutes left, David. No, no, <laughs> no, no, I could talk all day about this sort of stuff. No, not nine minutes. Uh, so if it's uh, Jules Home, um, mm -hmm. for one upgrade, you're looking at 235. Oh, there you go. I was right, roughly. Yep. Um, okay. So you can always uh, email Vision Store if you'd like a uh, yep. work done for you. Now, now if you want not work, if you do, if you want to be clever, not sneaky, and, and you wanted to make sure that things were compatible, what I, what you can also do is you don't have to. You can use the Jaws demo version, uh, two thousand and twenty-one your machine while you're still using two thousand Jaws two thousand eighteen or Jaws eighteen at the same time. Um, because what I always say to people is be very careful when you change your screen reader versions as well. Because while I said some things may improve, some things may go backwards. So what I normally suggest to people, if you're using JAWS 18 or JAWS 2018, put the demo version on first, run it, use the programs or do the tasks on your machine that you want to do on your Windows computer, then make the decision to update. And then you can buy the SMA or the full version if you want. Um, I just, I'm just one of these people that if it's working, don't try and break it and don't try and reinvent the wheel. If it's not working for some reason or another, and you just want to update to be future proof, then put the demo version of the new version on there, keep the old version going. And then when you're happy, Bob's your uncle, off you go. But I've just been left high and dry too many times to think, why didn't I talk to myself before I did this? And that's one of the reasons why is because you can run into hot water sometimes. So if it ain't broken, don't try and fix it. Um, now, for other stuff that you want to maybe want to follow up on for us today. So I've mentioned Microsoft.com slash accessibility, Apple.com slash accessibility. Let's not forget Android, Android.com slash accessibility. We also have our adapt adaptive technology help desk, which you can get access by calling the main Vision Australia number, which is one three hundred. 847-466, or if you happen to be trendy, 1300-VISION, that's 847-466. There's also the, micro, the Apple Accessibility Support Help Desk for anybody who is blind and low vision. And the number for that is 1300-365-083. That number again for Apple Accessibility is 1300-365-083. Microsoft also has a Disability Help Desk, and their number is one 800 Two three sorry two eight three three double zero so one eight hundred two eight three three double zero um, and that's available basically I think the Apple one's twenty four hours a day um, um, I think the Microsoft one's basically only business hours and then finally if you happen to use the free Be My Eyes app is where an app is where if you've got an iPhone or an Android device you can ring up and get somebody as a volunteer to support you by your camera that can assist you if you're blind or low vision to check the mail, check in the pantry, whatever else. But if you go to the special services section in that app, um, besides Microsoft being there, there's also one for Google or Android assistance. So if you've got a Samsung or an Android device and you need help with it, you can go into the Be My Eyes app on your Android or iPhone, go into special services, tap on Google, and via your video camera, you can have a video chat with a support person. So it's actually quite handy as well. So there we go. I think I'm probably officially out of time, um, Tony. So 
Thanks, Peel, for listening to me so far, and I'll pass it back to you for the moment, Tony. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, five minutes left, so if there are any questions from our um, delegates and participants, feel free to um, use the chat box. Um, but very um, cool advice that you've provided, David, with regards to accessibility, you know, the Braille devices, speech devices, um, software. Um, you've covered a lot of information. Um, we have a question from Ahmed, who is asking about um, TV setup at home. <laughs> um, that will probably be, uh, with regards to setting up your TV at home, that will probably be where you purchase your, your TV from. I'm pretty sure that store or that um, franchise will be able to help you set up that TV. Yeah, or, um, or you can also you can also if it's if it's to do with accessibility, then you can also contact the AT help desk as well. Yeah, and uh, they can certainly talk you through it. So, um, you know, places TVs like Samsung um, have built-in accessibility, and that's what the AT help desk is for. Because um, setting up a TV, um, particularly what what you may or may not have, um, is really messy. Um, so what we tend to say at Vision Australia is that we'll help you with the accessibility stuff. Um, but like Tony said, you really have to talk to people that you bought the TV off. So, for example, what I did was um, I contacted a local company here on the central coast in Gosford, and I got them to set up my TV for me because I thought I'm not going to start plugging in cables to my stereo, my TV, my HDMI cable. I thought somebody else can do it for me. So that's what I did. And then I, because I knew it, I then went through the Samsung setup and set up the, you know, the audio description for ABC and SBS and I turned the speech software on so the TV spoke to me when I was using the remote control. Great. Thank you, David, for your input as well. Hope that answered your question, Ahmed. Any other questions? No. Oh, one's just come through. Um, well, there's a question. Um, from uh, someone who says her son can't read and loves computer games. Are there any devices that can read out the screen? Mm. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, the, the, the answer to that is yes and no. On the Nintendo Switch, the answer is mostly 95% no. Um, however, um, if you use an Xbox, um, an Xbox One, there's actually screen some limited screen reading screen magnification in particular um, and on the uh, the new ps5 which has just come out and nobody can get their hands on it's got full-blown accessibility now and there's a few games that have come out for accessibility unfortunately they're the main mayhem and shooting type games they're not really appropriate for for young people however there are two sources that i always recommend people go to there's a community website for anything to do with iOS gaming productivity and entertainment called Apple Viz. So that's Apple and V-I-S for vision.com. And if you're after games that are in large print, speak out to you or speak with voiceover, then it's actually absolutely spectacular to look there. So that's applevis.com. If you want to look at gaming for a PC and accessible games that people have commented on, there's another website called audiogames.net. So that's audiogames, one word, .net. And I think last time I looked there, they had about 485 games listed across all genres, across PC, Mac, iOS, um, and Android. So that was that's a very spectacular website. So applevis.com for anything to do with iPhone, iPad, gaming, et cetera, and then audiogames.net. We've run out of time, so <laughs> Sash? <laughs> We certainly have. Um, there's, yeah, they say you learn something every day, and I have to say that's very true with this webinar, especially about the uh, Mountbatten Whisperer. Uh, I had no idea you could connect a keyboard to it and use it as a printer as well, so that was uh, really helpful to know. And it was really good uh, 
having a first look at the Mantis Q40 because there's obviously been a lot of talk about it, a lot of excitement. So it was good to to sh you know hear you talking about it and what it does, and it looks like a fantastic device. So thank you so much uh, for that, David. I also want to thank everyone for attending. Um, you can contact the Vision Store team if you have any other questions or inquiries. Uh, the number is one 800 or you can email visionstore at visionaustralia.org. Um, we will also put a copy of this recording um, on our Vision Store YouTube channel if you want to watch it again. Um, at the end of this webinar, there'll be a short survey for you to complete. Any feedback that you can provide will assist us in improving our content and delivery of future webinars. So it's really important that we do get that feedback. Um, we'd love you to join us uh, for our next Exploring Technology with David Woodbridge webinar next month. The topic is still uh, to be uh, considered. So please check your emails and our website for further details. Uh, thank you and goodbye from us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Flea.